Welcome back to State of the Nation. The government's corruption war is hot focus today. Kaya Del Cuerpa, former Commissioner for Transport in Lagos State, and Ibrahim Garbo, public affairs analyst, are with me in Lagos and Abuja studios. In that order, I want to thank you so much indeed, still. For, let's continue with your line of thoughts concerning now, uh, the structure. The, the 400 billion, to me, in every statistical study like this, there's always a margin of error, plus or minus. But it, I think it, will, it, it could be more if this study was conducted earlier. And if the study is conducted again, which is going to happen definitely, you will see that this figure will have started going down. And I'll tell you why. What will make it go down? This is the reason. What the study, go and read the study deep. What the study has discovered is that people pay this bribe so that they can fasten the duration of service. I want to get a passport. It's going to take two days, let's say three days. I want to get mine today. I pay. I don't want to be punished and allowed to take seven days. I pay. Now, with the ease of doing business, recently launched by government, with the whistleblower scheme launched by government, with all the anti-corruption programs launched by the government, Nigerians are now more conscious of what constitutes corruption. There are two major forms of corruption. Bribery, which is the basis of this. Then the second one is, is a mismanagement of public funds. That's not part of this issue. So people will now get to know. So if I, somebody asks me for money, 20% of people who are asked to pay bribe in this study did not pay. Okay, hold on. By the next let's, study, let's, let's get the thoughts of uh, Ibrahim. Uh, Ibrahim, do you agree with what he said? Yeah, I, I so much love uh, what he is talking about, the way he's even the, uh, explaining the, 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 the impact of that report to, uh, to citizens. Like, I, I quite agree with him. Yeah, you see, Gimba, one thing that this report will succeed in doing to us as citizens is bringing to our conscience, I mean, our conscience, and also will it will remain conscious to us that, look, whenever you're in the government office, you should be careful, you should not be cajoled into accepting to pay bribe just because somebody is not on the seat or somebody is telling you, I'm in a hurry, somebody is trying to actually prepare you for his own bargain, and you, you, you fall into that. Uh, it, it's, it's quite a commendable one from the government to allow this kind of report to even come out. Uh, I, I think there's sincerity of purpose from the governments of the day. This is because uh, we've not had this ever since. For over 16 years or beyond, we've never had opportunity to hold a report that would bring to our conscience that, look, we are either going wayward or we're going I mean, on the right direction, which is quite commendable. We love that. And for me, I think there's more of this report, not only from NBS, we should also have other segments. In fact, the FCC itself, you wanted to talk about the FCC, if I remember. Um, you see, the agencies need more resources, and they need more resource persons also, because some of these uh, allegations may have been reported to the agencies. If you can remember, there are thousands of petitions flowing into these agencies, but you discover that these agencies my, I mean, are not actually meeting up with the, the rest, I mean, to respond to most of these uh, petitions. So, and, and it gives room, or, or that, it helps the government agencies, uh, particularly those individuals that are perpetrating this corruption, to continue to feel they want to just do, I mean, uh, they have a field day to do whatever they want. So well, I think well, but, it's a but, good one. But, but when you talk to people, uh, public society, when you talk to people, what sense of direction do you get from their narrative about the war on corruption? Do they feel that we as a people are winning or is corruption fighting us back? Um, the, the, the public out there are actually concerned about uh, the way the fight against corruption is going. Why? Because if you look at what we've been seeing recently, there hasn't been enough... Uh, uh, conviction within the court of law, we know what has been happening. Look at the case, uh, the Saraki issue. Uh, it actually affected a lot of citizens. People felt, no, 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 we shouldn't be going this way. It is expected that judiciary should be doing much more than what it is being done today. Why? Because there is no single conviction. You could, you could count maybe one, two, three. And those, even those ones have been contested in, in the same court. So you wonder. But, but notwithstanding, uh, what we're celebrating is this consciousness that Nigerians are becoming very conscious of, uh, of what is going on. So we on our own, we are, uh, citizens are now saying we should fight these things on our own. Even if the court is not doing anything, we should continue because definitely we will not continue like this as a nation. One day, our generation will come and say, no, we will not accept this. Okay, uh, let, me, let me get your thoughts on uh, 
what we must do to try to nip, at least reduce corruption further and stop the loopholes and the, the stealing. He has said uh, it is important we begin to look at these records and see how we can build on it to begin to address the so many faults that we face in this country. But looking at the remuneration of the workforce in the country, which is the, about the biggest, and uh, the allegations of co deep-rooted corruption happening at the civil service level. What must we do? Will an improvement in their remunerations, for instance, curb corruption? Um, there is no data to support that before me. But if I'm going to go by experience, I know after what we did then in 2008 on last month VIO, where we did is to look into the hazard allowance. We look into some of their remuneration. And if you also go back, in Lagos State, when the Ashwajibola uh, uh, uh Judicial Service Reform comes up, they also make sure, if you go and see the study, the study says police, followed by prosecutors. Yes, the prosecutors. And then judges and magistrates. Now, they, in order to step down, they look at their problems. They started providing them good allowances, so it will definitely help. They give them housing, it will help. The same thing with so why is the government look, not looking towards no, it, increasing it, the salaries of, let, 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 of let, the civil service? Let me make a decision. It's not about salary. This report exposes a lot of things. If we get deep into it, there is ease of doing this. I won't give you bribe. You won't ask me for bribe if the process is clear. It's not ambiguous. I want to get my passport. I want to get a driver license. You create a one-stop shop like we have in last my in Lagos. And I can go in there, pay money here to the bank, e-banking, e-payment, I move to the next stage, the test is right there, I don't need to go out. Create a conducive atmosphere for public service business to be done. Then the remuneration, that is a, a, a no-no. We need to look at the workers' wages. They must be paid mm. an amount that meets their, their, their needs. If you keep that, let's get to bribery. That is not a justification for you to take bribe. I don't want to mix the two. While it is right to pay appropriately, it is not a justification to take bribe. Your taking bribe is depriving me of government service. It's depriving me of my rights. And also hurting me of my and, and, you know and, what also, it and also hurting the it also disturbs the resource allocation within it. But let me go this way. This government has done a good job by bringing this to public view. And we must comment and we must commend this government and realize the basis for fighting this corruption war is me and you. I want to thank and you so much. That's a good place. That is to do a baseline study. We that's, are looking that's, for the that's a good That's a good place to, uh, to anchor. I want to thank you so much indeed. Kyle Del Quaifa is the former commissioner for transportation. Also in Abuja studios, Garba Ibrahim is uh, with us in uh, Abuja studios. Many thanks indeed also for talking to us on State of the Nation. Of course, to you watching from wherever you are around the world. Thank you so much indeed for being part of the show. I'm Gimba Umar. Join us same time next week for a fresh package. Bye for now.